welcome to another episode of Women Empowerment Series with me today, Farisha. And we have a very lovely guest joining us. It's Bilkis Bahari. Hi, Bilkis. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. And it's a pleasure to have you on my show, Women Empowerment Series. This is where I showcase the amazing and wonderful ladies in Malaysia. So, Bilkis, can you introduce more about yourself? Okay, first of all, Farisha, thank you so much for inviting me on your podcast. And, you know, as you mentioned, uh, my name is Bilkis, Bilkis Bahari. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kuala Lumpur and I'm a journalist. So currently, I'm living and working in Astana, the capital city of Kazakhstan. But right now, I'm back in Kuala Lumpur to visit my family. Mm -hmm. so I started my career as a financial journalist in 2011 with the New Straits Times. So my um, beat or the industry that I cover mostly was the aviation industry. And mm -hmm. back then I was responsible for expanding the coverage of aviation industry, not just in Malaysia, but also Southeast Asia. And after that, in 2017, I moved to Astana. I received an offer to join Kazakhstan's largest state media agency, Khabar Agency. Um, there, I'm responsible for producing news in English. And mm -hmm. I also helped the channel to introduce the first one-on-one -on -one format interview program for the television channel. And I also hosted the program. Mm -hmm. And throughout my career in the last decade, I've covered so many events, mostly business-related and I've interviewed many politicians, key business figures, uh, Shakat Aziz, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan. Wow. And Mr. Yeah. The, the yeah. famous physicist and futurist, you know, to name a few. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, my work um, over the last uh, decade, I consider myself to be very lucky to have a very supporting team and bosses in Malaysia and in Kazakhstan as well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when you um, work, you have uh, some challenges that you have to overcome, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, in Malaysia, at first, it was understanding the industry. Because when I, I realized when I first started to become a journalist, I didn't really know much about um, the business world. So that's why in 2014, I did my MBA so that I understand, okay, what are the businessmen, the um, uh, executives are talking mm -hmm. about when they talk about, let's say, a bid, uh, revenue, profit and all that. Yeah. And I also read a lot on the aviation industry so that I can talk to the CEOs, to the managing directors. I can talk in their language, you know, using the jargons. Yes. And mm -hmm. so for me, it was in Malaysia, it was more of um, gaining respect of these people. So they don't see me just as, you know, a young girl, a young journalist who just doing her job, but also as a person who understand the industry as well. Yeah. And in Kazakhstan, for example, it's different. It's overcoming the communication barrier at work because yeah. language I'm the only yes. foreigner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm the only foreigner working there while mm -hmm. others are local Kazakhs and Russians and mm -hmm. most of them speak Russian. Only a handful speaks English. So when mm -hmm. I want to talk to my colleagues, let's say when we go out to do the interviews and I want to talk to the videographer or the lighting technician they don't speak English at all. They just know, hello, bye, how are you? That's all. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I want to talk to them, to tell them specific things, at that time when I just joined, it was a bit um, of a challenge mm -hmm. because I don't really know much Russian. Uh, I don't really know many Russian words. Mm -hmm. But I generally don't see um, you know, the inability to communicate at that time as something that's stopping me. Because before I moved to Kazakhstan, I took uh, private Russian classes for two years. Mm -hmm. So at least, you know, I'm, I was prepared before I go there. Yeah. 
and you know, I know the basic grammar, I can read and write in Russian. So when I moved there, I decided to just started talking to my colleagues and my friends as well. I know that my Russian is not perfect, especially when I just moved there, when I just joined the company and I, I have a lot of grammatical errors. And I know now still I have grammatical errors because Russian mm -hmm. language is not a very easy language. Yeah. But um, I learn from my mistakes. So let's say mm -hmm. if I say, if I pronounce something wrongly, then my um, colleagues or my friends would help correct me. They say, oh, you know, actually you, you pronounce it like this. So they, they are very helpful. So yeah. yeah, because of that, so now I can, you know, I can fully understand and speak the language as well. Yeah, I guess it's a learning curve. It's a learning process from you. And I really have to congratulate you, Bilkis, because you take the leap of faith and also you step outside of your comfort zone. Yes, you step outside of your comfort zone. And this is what we want to encourage more women and girls to step out of their comfort zone and reach their fullest potential. And there will be challenges in our career, in our chosen field, but it's how we overcome it. It's how we maintain the uh, positive mindset and, and the ability to willing to learn and, and like what you said just now you took up private Russian classes and you also start you know uh, you know, conversing in Russian with your colleagues and, and that is a step by step process so wow yeah that's amazing thank you yeah, and I know it's not easy because you're in a foreign land, you're in a foreign country, but you you take that step to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and, and you give it a go, you give it a try. Okay. I think uh, for, for women, let's say, for them to overcome something, they have to, first, they have to know why they're doing the things that they're doing. Yeah. They have to know the objective. So, yeah. and... The what are the outcomes? Outcome. Yeah. Yeah, so, of course, uh, things don't go 100% exactly as you plan it to be. Yeah, but it's okay, yeah. Exactly, when you think back about, you know, why I'm doing this, uh, what are my goals? So, you can just stick to your goal, and along the way, you will be, uh, you will have to adapt to the new environment, to the new situation, so that is something, adaptability, flexibility, and also knowing your objective. Yes, exactly. Okay, moving on to the next question. What does mm -hmm. woman empowerment mean to you? Woman empowerment to me means um, supporting women as well as men, like both genders uh, who are deserving so personally, I, based on my um, career experience, when I hire people, when I talk to uh, many people, I believe in giving opportunity to those who work hard, who show the initiative, regardless of who that person is. Yeah. Because, um, and I also see if that person can actually do the job. Mm -hmm. And um, so talking about hiring someone, so I will give my personal example. Mm -hmm. in, in the past, I don't see the candidate to, how to say, to fulfill like a full quota base, you know, like, okay, we need more women or we need more men. Mm -hmm. I see if the person, regardless if it's a she or he, really wants to work mm -hmm. and I see her or his strengths that can help the team and the company. So when I started working, I know some people said that this was back in Malaysia, right? I know yeah. some people said that, you know, oh, Bilkis, of course, she can get exclusive uh, from so-and-so because she's a woman and she's young. But I don't believe that. Uh, and I don't it. want people to give yeah. me an opportunity just... Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It, you know, if it's just based on um, how young you are or your physical appearance... It's just maybe you can get lucky one or two or three times maximum. And I, I always believe that you have to earn people's respect. Yes, and it's based on your effort and your KPIs as well. Yeah. 
Exactly. So like I mentioned earlier, in terms of um, when I was uh, a journalist here, I was covering the aviation industry, I mm-hmm. burned the midnight oil reading about the industry to understand the business and the jargons. And I believe that people who gave me all the exclusives and the breaking news stories did that mm-hmm. because they know I understand the industry and I know what they're talking about and they know what I'm talking about as well. Wow. Okay. And now moving on to the next question. What would be your advice to the young ladies out there? So young ladies, one thing, it's good because you're young, so you have the time. And um, my advice is that uh, to both young ladies and gentlemen Mm -hmm. is to focus on building a foundation for yourself first. Make sure that you are able to stand on your own feet. You are able to make a living for yourself before you move on to something else. Usually, it's, you know, starting a family. Yeah. Um, You don't have to be super rich. You don't have to be a millionaire first. But at least you know that, okay, this is what I can do. And Mm -hmm. this is the amount of savings that I have. And before you proceed, you know, and many people, I think many people may not agree with me uh, in this, but I believe that if you can't even stand on your own, how do you expect to be responsible over someone else, let alone a child? And for me, I believe in focusing. So Mm -hmm. when you finish, in my personal experience as well, uh, after I graduated from university, I started focusing on my career. I had um, a serious relationship at that time. So um, now, alhamdulillah, we got married (laughs) four years ago. Mm -hmm. But at that time, and my husband, he's from my husband, he's from Kazakhstan. He's a Kazakh. So we both decided that um, he was studying. He was doing his master's here at that time, and. After he graduated, I also started working. So we decided to focus on our career first. So we said, let's be in a relationship, but let's focus on our career first and we will see how things go. Yeah. So we know that we want to be with each other, yeah. you know, and forever, but we decided to focus on things one by one first because I think that, let's say we get married straight away and then imagine, you know, how are you going to focus on building your career when you already, you have like so many things going on around you. Yeah. And then suddenly you have children and you can't just ignore your child, right? Mm-hmm. And imagine you at that time... You have to be responsible, you, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. imagine at that time when you can't even stand on your own feet. If you have the support of your family, yes, that's great. But the reality is not everyone is like that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said... Um, be able to stand on your own feet and make sure you are financially independent. Uh, every time you get your salary, monthly salary, make sure you pay yourself first before you pay someone else, regardless if it's 80% sale. Because once you, once you have the money, it's easier for you to make more money. Yeah. And you know, once you get these things in order, then only it's easier for you to follow your dreams. And you have to follow your heart as well. Yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. you know, I've seen so many people actually who are creative and able to start your own business, but mm-hmm. they can't because of their financial commitments. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to do something, but because of that, they, they have to leave their job and they're worried, you know, if I don't get my salary, how am I supposed to sustain my uh, living? And I have a responsibility over my family. So Mm -hmm. I think before you do anything, make sure you're financially independent. Be smart about your money. Yes. And also um, another advice is that be open to change. Because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, they are very scared of change. They get a job. They get comfortable there. But it depends. I mean, if you're the kind of person who just want something comfortable, it's okay. But if you're the kind of person you want to try something new, mm-hmm. then you have to um, be open to change. Disrupt yourself. And I read a quote uh, by Bill Gates a uh, couple yeah. of days ago. Actually. Mm-hmm. He said that as you, uh, as you get older, mm-hmm. your interests and your skills will evolve. 
my advice is to be open to change. So yeah, you never know, you know, maybe now you're a journalist, for example, and then in the next five years, you can um, have your own business or you want to change to another industry. It's, it's okay, but as long as you are open to change. Yeah, change is constant. Yeah. Yeah. So my behavior, the way I see things and all um, are very much influenced by them, especially my parents. They are the one who have been supporting me all these years. And no matter what I do, I know that they will always have my back. Yeah. And uh, like my mom, for example, she taught me how to appreciate other people. And I think I got her charisma to be easily friends with other people and to talk to people as well because she's that type of person. And whereas my father, uh, he is the one who taught me to focus on my career and to be financially independent. He taught yeah. me how to manage my money mm-hmm. and also not to make decisions based on emotions. Because, yeah. you know, as women, I think mo- majority of the women would agree with me. We yeah. are very emotional. And yes, sometimes, we're emotional creatures. Or maybe most yeah. of the time, we can make decisions based on emotions. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so he, I remember he always tells me that whether you're happy or you're sad or you're angry, however that you're feeling, do not make a decision at that time. Yeah. So you have to put your emotions aside, Mm -hmm. think about it, and then you make the decision. Because, you know, sometimes when we're happy, we're like, oh, okay, okay, let's do it and all that. But actually, it's not let's say, probably it's not beneficial for you. So, um, and, you know, in terms of idol as well, I'm also proud of my sisters and brother. Mm -hmm. So they all grew up well, all very responsible people and very passionate in what they do. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, so apart from your family and your loved one, who else inspire and motivates you? If it's an international uh, figure, I would Mm -hmm. say it's Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. Because um, I see how she has been supporting her husband, and she has been the central figure um, in his life. Yeah. So, so they, uh, he has this presidential life and after mm-hmm. the presidential life. And I believe that women should um, be the support to men. And men should be the support to women as well. So it's not like one person just taking the lead 100% and the other cannot voice out what he or she feels or think. Yeah. Because it always takes two to tango. So in mm-hmm. her case, even when he was the president, I think the way she carries herself is very... You can see that, you know, she has been supporting him all this while. Yeah. And now I'm glad that she came out with this uh, book, Becoming, and then the, there's a Netflix show of her... Mm -hmm. And I watched that and it's actually quite moving because she, I didn't know, let's say in America that there was, there is a huge educational problem and education is not Mm -hmm. accessible to everyone because Mm -hmm. we thought that in developed countries, you know, it's accessible Mm -hmm. to everyone and it's cheap, but uh, watching that, she went on to the ground, she talked to the students, she told mm-hmm. them to um, be confident in themselves, to be who they are. I mean, seeing somebody that huge, because she used to be the um, first lady, right? Yeah. Seeing somebody like that to talk, to motivate people. So... That is something I believe that as we grow older or as we progress in our career, at the end of the day, it's like mm-hmm. Abraham Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs. Yes. So, yeah. you know, firstly, the first stage, you want the food security and all that. So you move up the mm-hmm. um, top of the pyramid is mm-hmm. the self-actualization. Actualization. I think that's yeah. Where, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's where we are all heading towards. So in her case, I mean, 
of course she's financially independent even before she got um when she got married she was still working as a lawyer yeah and she got her kids so she was taking care of the kids and she was taking care of her husband but it doesn't mean that you know once you have all this your life stops mm -hmm. probably it would be on pause for a while but like I said earlier, when you have the objective, you know why you're doing uh, things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So even though the plans change, it's okay. You will adapt and you'll be flexible enough. But at, you will eventually reach your goal. Mm -hmm. You have a purpose in life. That's the most important thing is yes. you know your purpose. Yeah. Okay. And how about women in Malaysia? Who do you admire the most? Okay, this is based on my personal like experience with her. It's Irene Omar of Air Asia. Mm. She, I look at her as someone. I met her when I was very young, like in my early twenties. Mm -hmm. At the time, I just started being a journalist, and at that time, she was appointed as the CEO of Air Asia. Air Asia. And, yeah, and I see how she's very passionate about her um, career and um, the things that she talk about, the things that, um, you know, how she thinks and all that. So at that time, I remember I was telling myself like, wow, if when I grow up, I want to be someone like her. Yeah. Because, um, because to me, she's a very professional lady. Mm -hmm. And she's not, um, how to say, she earned the respect of both men and women in the industry, not just in Malaysia, but internationally as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that was why I started, I told myself, if I want to be like her, if I want respect from people, I need to know what I'm talking about. I need yes. to know the subject very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... And that's what I did. And when I moved to Kazakhstan, I did the same thing as well. So in terms of the Russian language. Wow, amazing. And I also idolize her as well, Irene Omar. I follow her on social media as well. And I follow her on LinkedIn. Yeah, she's amazing. And I really love her dedication and her passion towards her work. And she's very down to earth. You know, sometimes some people when they are in high position, mm -hmm. they can complete, their character can completely change. So the way they talk to, let's say, journalists also can be very different. But mm -hmm. in her case, she treated everyone equally and she's very humble. So I always remind myself, no matter where I am or how far I've come, I always need to be humble and to treat others like I treat you know, everybody else. Right. Just be equal. Yes. Okay, Bilkis, we almost come to the end of the show. Towards the end of Women Empowerment Series video podcast. Do you have anything that you would like to share with our audience today? Any advice, any tips? So, uh, my advice is that, um, you know, currently it's the pandemic and a lot of people are facing difficulties right now mm -hmm. and one of the biggest things that this pandemic has taught me was that we can't control everything we can right. only do our best but at the end of the day it is God who will decide what's best for us right and see this pandemic some people are lucky to still have a job some people are not to say not lucky, but still, you know, lucky in a way not to have a job anymore because then they have the time to start doing something that they've always wanted to do or right. they can try something else. Mm -hmm. So see this situation as an advantage for you mm -hmm. because if your mindset, uh, mindset is negative all the time, you will attract negativity. You will attract all the bad things. Right, And it will really affect your health as well. So um, life is hard, yes. Sometimes you will have to face big challenges. Mm -hmm. But it's important to always think positive. Always think how you can benefit out of this situation. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, don't put off what you want to do, especially if it involves being creative, because now is the time that we can be creative and this is actually the time when creativity prevails. So just do it. Yeah, just go for it. Just do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, as they say, carpe diem, seize the day. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, thank you so much, Bill Case, for being in Women Empowerment Series a video podcast. And for those of you who would like to get in touch with Bill Case Bahari to get connected with her online, what is yours? Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, so that people can connect with you? So, I'm more active on Instagram, actually. So, my handle is at Bilkis, B-I-L-Q-I-S dot Bahari. And on Facebook, I'm Bilkis Bahari. And on LinkedIn as well, it's Bilkis Bahari. Okay, and I hope that all of you are inspired and also motivated by Bilkis sharing just now. And if you would like to uh, connect with her, you can connect with her online on Facebook, Instagram, and also LinkedIn. And till then, stay safe, take care. Thank you, Bilkis. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you, Farisha. Okay, bye. Bye.